Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to part two in our series of archival mounting principles. In today's video, we're going to be covering two separate topics. First, we're going to cover finding the visual or optical center of your mounting board. And then second, we're going to be T-hinging this mount onto our archival board. Now, if you're wondering what is optical center and why would I care when mounting my prints, this is a perfect example right here. Now, this print might look like it's mounted in the center of the board, but it's actually not. The bottom is three and a half inches and the top is two and a half inches. Now, this has to do with an optical illusion where if you mount a print on the center of the board, some people will see that it looks like it's hanging below the midpoint or like it's sagging in the bottom of the frame. And I'm one of those people. When I see a print mounted in the center of a board, to me, it looks misaligned and like it's hanging a little bit low. So in order to counteract that, you wanna raise the print higher in the mat to what's called the optical or visual center. Now, what a lot of photographers will do is simply raise the print slightly higher and go ahead and mount it, and that's totally fine. However, in my experience in all things photography, especially printing, what you want are results that are consistent and repeatable. And that is why we're going to be covering the process we covered today, where there's a very specific process to always find the visual center and find it the same way every single time. And this is important because if you're gonna be mounting a lot of your work, you want that mat to be consistent across all of the work, even if you mount it at different times. So if I were to come back and mount the exact same image next year, I would mount it the same way in the exact same spot. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna show you on Photoshop because it'd be a little bit easier to show you the lines and how we align everything. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and once we get this into the center, we'll go ahead and T-hinge it. But let's hop on the computer and show you what this is all about. I've opened up Photoshop and I have made a canvas that is 24 inches by 12 inches. And this is the size of the mat that we're going to be cutting today. Now this will give me roughly a three inch border all the way around. However, of course, the top and bottom are going to differ. The sides will be roughly three inches and they will be equal, but the top is going to be a little bit thinner than the bottom. And that's the whole purpose of what we're doing today. Now what I've done is I've calculated the size of the mat window that I want, which is 17 and a quarter by six, and I've inserted that object here. Now the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to drag it to the top left corner. So now what I have is my object in the top left corner and this L-shaped open space on the bottom. So once we've moved our object into the top left corner, we know that our mat opening is 17 and a quarter on the long side and the total mat is 24 inches. So that's going to mean that this open space here is six and three quarters of an inch or six and six eighths divided by two will give us three and three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to select my line tool and I'm going to move in from the edge one, two, three, and three eighths of an inch. And once I'm exactly on that line, I'm going to bring this all the way down to the bottom. I'm now going to do the exact same process for the bottom. And this measurement's a little bit easy. Six from 12 is six, meaning that our midpoint is going to be right here at the nine inch mark. I'll drag this all the way across, maintaining zero degrees. And now what we have are two intersecting lines which are going to divide the remaining space. If I now moved my mat opening to this intersection, I would have once again found the center of our mat board, which makes sense. We've bisected the remaining on the right and on the bottom, therefore giving us the midpoint. However, we don't want to move back to the center of the image. We wanna find the optical center instead. So what I'm gonna do is add a final line, which is going to go from our edge here, right to the corner of our window mat. And this is the point where we want our bottom right corner to land. So I'm going to take the mat opening and I'm going to drag it right to that corner. This now is where we would want our mat to be. And this is the visual or optical center. Hopefully this representation on the screen makes it a little bit easier to follow, but let's go ahead and do this in practice using the real mat. Rather than walking through the exact same process twice in a row, I'm just gonna do this quick montage and fast forward showing you how I marked the board that we're using today. I did want to point out that when you're using a uh, matted image, 
it's not going to be the size of the print, but the window mat opening itself that you're gonna be using, which is why I have this cardboard spacer because the print is larger and it's much easier for me to cut a spacer to the window mat size I want and use that. Now, when we do a float mount image next week, this is the exact same process that I'd be doing, except in that case, because the full paper will be visible, in that case, I would actually use the print itself to find visual center. So obviously, if you're using a print that you're going to trim or float mount, those are all things you need to take into account. So there needs to be a little bit consideration given to what the final presentation is going to be and using those dimensions to help find visual center. All right, well, hopefully that little demonstration on Photoshop was helpful. I tried doing it here on the back of the mat board, but the lines were very hard to see, and I felt like it would just be easier to follow on the screen, so hopefully you found it helpful. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. Now that we have our print uh, on the backing board and we have hinged our mat in place, and if you're wondering how to hinge a mat, go ahead and check out part one. We're going to go ahead and use a T-hinge to mount the print to the backer board. Now, a T-hinge is exactly what it sounds like. It is two pieces of linen tape that interweave to make a T-shape. The adhesive is only on one side of the tape, so one side is going to have the adhesive facing the back of the print, and the second piece of tape is going to go over the top, holding that piece of tape against the backer board. Now this does two things. One, it makes sure that none of the adhesive gets onto the mat itself so that you can unhinge it and remove the print if you need to. And additionally, of course, it holds that piece of tape in place so that your print doesn't fall. Now, what I want to point out is that this is a great method for small prints, but you can also use it for large prints. Today's print is very small, so I'll just be using two hinges, one roughly three or four inches inside of each corner. Now, if I were doing a much larger print, I would do a combination of hinging and photo corners. Now, we talked about photo corners in part one, but what I would do is I would hinge on the top, and then I would put a photo corner on the bottom corner. And that's just to give it a little bit of extra support in case one of these hinges fails, you don't want your print to fall out of the frame. So for larger prints, I combine the two methods. Now, if you're wondering why would I use photo corners instead of just putting uh, linen tape on the bottom, you don't wanna secure all of your edges. You only want the tape to be touching the print on one edge. And the reason is as the print expands and contracts, you don't wanna confine those edges because you can get buckling or other issues. So by only having your hinges on the top and then having a free floating mount like a photo corner on the bottom, it allows that print to expand and contract and you won't have any issues with buckling in the future. Now, this is a pretty heavyweight paper and I wouldn't really be worried about it either way. I'm using uh, Ilford's Gold Fiber Silk and I highly doubt I'd have any issues with buckling hinges, but it's always best to be careful, especially when you're talking about long-term conservation framing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the print over here and we are going to do this in real time. Okay, so what I've done in preparation is I've already cut my four strips of linen tape to size. I cut them a little bit bigger than I usually would, hoping it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to see. I also have my burnishing tool and my knife, as well as my archival weights. Now, the secret to the way I do this is this silicone release liner. This is the backing paper for the uh, pressure sensitive adhesive that I use. It's usually just something that you would discard. However, I like to save scraps of it because nothing sticks to it and it makes it very handy for things like this. If you don't have this, I'll show you how you can do this exact same process. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put my first two strips on the print. So I'll set my other two strips to the side. And on my first take, the camera of course died on me. 40% battery means nothing. So I removed the tape and what you really could do is um, use mineral spirits to get rid of the adhesive, but because I'm putting on another piece right over it, I didn't bother. This is just for demonstration purposes anyway. So what you would normally have to do if you don't have silicone release liner is you would want to remove the backing of the tape and you would want to feed it to the back of the print and then use some type of weight to apply pressure to your uh, tape and make sure there's good adhesion because you don't wanna be burnishing the front of your print for obvious reasons. You don't wanna scratch the print. However, I like to make sure that I get really good adhesion. So what I do 
is I go ahead and apply the tape to the back, letting that front edge curl up. And then I'll take my burnishing tool and make sure I have a really good adhesion. Focusing on the edges, I wanna make sure there's not gonna be any edges that get raised and allow that tape to rise and get snagged in the future. All right, and then here's my second piece. Now this is about as big as I'd go without adding a third hinge. Usually if I get more than about a foot and a half between hinges, I'll start adding a third or fourth or whatever. Um, but in this case, this is a relatively small print, so two will be plenty. And again, just making sure I burnish those edges down. I have really good adhesion. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, now your adhesive is facing up, numb nuts. How are you going to center your print without getting the adhesive onto your mat? And that is where our silicone release liner comes in. So we take the shiny side up, put it right down on our hinges, put my burnishing bone in the front, and now I'll be able to throw on some gloves and I'll be able to freely move my print. And that silicone release liner is acting as a barrier, making sure no adhesive touches my mat. And now I can align the print exactly where I want it. Trying to get this peak as close to center as possible. That looks good. Use my weights here. And now you'll see that when I pull that silicone release liner, it comes off with ease and there's no adhesion to that tape. Now the next step is to take those two pieces that I set aside earlier. And now what we're going to do is use this piece of tape to secure this tape down to the backing board. Now, I want to leave a small like 16th inch gap between the edge of this linen tape and the print. I don't want them to touch and that's going to allow, like I said, expansion and contraction of the print. So about that much space is plenty. Take my burnishing tool and try and remove any air that might be trapped. Just like that, we have a mounted print in the optical center of our mounting board. All right, well, that concludes part two of this month's series. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments whether or not you like to use the optical center or just the regular center of the mat and whether or not you see that same optical illusion. I'd be really curious to hear your all thoughts. Otherwise, that's going to do it for this week's video. Make sure you come back to part three. We'll be doing a float mount with through hinges. Once again, using linen tape, but in a way that I think is a lot more modern and cleaner and is probably my favorite archival mounting method. Uh, it's also a lot simpler because you don't have to cut any mats. But I uh, hope you come back for part three. I'll see you next time.